All right, so we need to be silent for like five seconds. Five seconds. Welcome back, OSLT family. Welcome, welcome. And I just want to tell you all that Melanie just hit her face on her microphone. <laughs> such a brat. Um, I turned to the side just as you did it. And I was like, oh my God, I, it that's was, amazing. I felt it a little bit, just a little bit. Right well, you sound, you like, looked like, like freaked out. You just did because yeah, I felt it. I was like, that's, the, <laughs> that's the mic. That's the mic. But if oh you didn't God. know, this is Melanie. And this is Kelly. <laughs> and this is our Spotlight Life podcast. Yes. Which is, yes. it's totally backward <laughs> from our normal uh, intro, but I had to share with everybody that we were, that Melanie just in her face. So <laughs> you're welcome, is. everybody out there. Well, on this episode, we have someone that's going to join us and hang out with us. Yes, I'm so excited. And we, get to, we do get to hang out with her once a month. We're not going to mm -hmm. lie. We do get to hang out with her. And um, it's kind of, it's fun because we get to bake with her. I wonder if anybody can guess who this is yet. Everybody probably already guessed if they watch our lives. I know. I so know. Yeah. yeah, without further ado, we have, Michaela, <laughs> welcome. Hey, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Yay! Yeah. Finally, I mean, we I talked know. about this for like a while. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm so glad that our schedules finally meshed. And we can yes, yes, seriously, because we want to know everything, everything, everything that oh. makes up Michaela Miller, Miss Losing to Blooming. <laughs> everything because like yeah like because we bake with you once a month but we don't know like that like your full true story of everything because mm -hmm. like you're you're you have a longer journey than actually most people that we get to talk to you mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah let's start with that like let them know like how far post up are you um so yeah i had i'm actually coming up on five years in may it'll be five years as of may 23rd i think okay. oh so, yeah. that's the day after my birthday yeah it is. Oh, That's wow. pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. I turned six years in May too. I'm May 13th. So mm -hmm. we're really like nice. oh, yes. oh, all close together. May yeah. is a great month. All right. Yeah. So uh sorry, we kind of went on top of it. Yeah, no. Uh <laughs> yeah, so you're five years. So yeah. Yeah. Like, how did this all start? Like what what was your breaking point? What what was going on? Okay, yeah. Um, so Honestly, like I, you know, I think a lot of us have very similar stories, struggled with weight pretty much my whole life. Um, mm -hmm. When I was <clears throat> in high school, I think I was, I don't know that I was really ever below like 200 when I was in mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I was 20 um, is kind of, I, I stumbled upon this like really extreme diet and I went on it with my mom because my mom was always the one that I dieted with even since a very young age right so mm -hmm. um mom found this new awesome diet we went on it together and I lost like 80 pounds and so I got I got down to 150 pounds um and I could not maintain it like I couldn't maintain it to save my life it came back on with a vengeance within like a couple of years. Oh. Um, and then that's when I really like started to balloon back up. I got up to 250 and then within like a year I was up to 300 pounds. And wow. Um, I, when I was like 25 is when I really started to, um, you know, I, I tried different diets and I tried different workout programs, but um, you know, nothing was really working and, um, or it was just too much to stick to like, and, or I wasn't getting the results, you know, yeah. and, um, I ended up having kind of like a health scare. It's kind of a funny story. Actually, <laughs> I was shopping with my friend. We were having like a girl's day. It was uh, around Christmas time. So we were doing shopping and I took some emergency that morning, you know, like the powdered vitamin C beverage, whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and all that day I was having horrible chest pains. Like hmm. I couldn't, I was struggling to breathe. I didn't want to freak my friend out. So I was kind of trying to play off. Like I was okay. okay. But, you know, I'm also like Googling it on my, you know, and everything's telling me like, you need to go to the 
emergency room right like you need to go see your doctor right away you're having a heart attack like, yeah I'm, yeah everything's telling me I'm, I'm having a heart attack and I honestly like I didn't want to believe it I was sh- shrugging it off it's like there's no way like I'm 25 years old there's no way I'm having a heart attack but then I was also at that point in my life at being 300 pounds I was always terrified to go to the doctor and mm-hmm. I was terrified to go to the doctor because I was afraid every single time I went to the doctor that they were going to tell me like, this, this is when I'm going to find out I have diabetes. This is when mm-hmm. I'm going to find out I have high blood pressure. This is when they're going to put me on, um, cholesterol medication. Like, right. mm-hmm. you know, I was, I was terrified of the health condition I was in. Um, and so I was so afraid and I finally did go to the doctor. It turned out it was just an allergic reaction to that emergency oh. I took that morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. It's yeah. Crazy. Um, but that was enough to like really wake me up and realize, mm-hmm. okay, you like you weren't having a heart attack, but you realized how real that could have been. Like mm-hmm. you are in a position right now at 25 years old. I have family history of heart disease, um, high mm. blood pressure, all of those things, high cholesterol. Like, so I just kind of realized it's it's time for change. And I had yeah. kind of started looking into weight loss surgery and you know doing a little bit of research, trying to see what it's all about. And after that moment is when I told my parents, I was like, I'm I'm going for it. I don't like I'm gonna call the clinic and set up my appointments and, and get it started. Um, I knew that going on another diet wasn't the, wasn't the answer. I knew that, you know, I was at a point where I needed medical help Help. for Mm -hmm. my condition. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what I view this as, you know, like it's, I know that people lose weight all the time without weight loss surgery, Mm -hmm. but sometimes you need medical help like obesity Mm -hmm. especially severe obesity it's a medical issue Mm -hmm. and weight loss surgery is a medical answer it's a medical solution and it's not just a medical solution like i view diets as a band-aid like it's it's not an actual um you know it kind of just like covers the symptom it doesn't go to the root problem it doesn't help you actually solve the problem and so Mm -hmm. i was done putting band-aids on like i wanted a longer lasting, a longer term solution for mm-hmm. my obesity. Like I was just done. I, I couldn't do it anymore. So that's when I looked into weight loss surgery and started the process. My insurance didn't cover it. So mm-hmm. I had to get, um, my parents actually let me get a loan against one of their vehicles. Um, so oh, that's oh, how wow. I, yeah, that's how I financed it. Um, and you know, then just had to pay off that, that loan. And, um, and so they yeah, were really so, supportive. Yeah. My, my okay. parents were very supportive. So my parents, I love them. Um, <laughs> when it comes to my weight, we have a really difficult relationship. Like my, yeah. my dad was really hard on me growing up about my weight. Mm. Um, he, you know, he wanted me to go, like, I remember being in second grade and being told by my dad that I needed to go on Weight Watchers with my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's you not know. fun. Yeah. yeah. And I remember one of my, like, earliest, earliest memories of my life, honestly, is we were getting ready. I think it was, like, for my fifth birthday or something like that. Or maybe my seventh birthday. I don't know. It's hard to know. Like, yeah, oh, seriously, <laughs> that time that it all meshes. Yeah. yeah. I can never remember anything. Like yeah. maybe a birthday. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just remember we were getting ready. Like I was going to have a pool party for my birthday. And I wanted a cute swimsuit for the pool party. And I, we went to the store and I found this rainbow bikini swimsuit with like little flowers all over it. Aww. And I took it, I was so excited. And I took it back to the dressing room with my mom and she looked at it and that it was a two piece. And she was like, this isn't for you. And like, Mm. put it away and then got me some like ugly (laughs) 
one one piece. piece. Yeah, that I had to wear. That's like one of my very first memories. And that's like, you know, this is something we'll get into later, but this whole concept of self-love and Mm -hmm. loving your body, that, Mm -hmm. that is like a new concept to me in these like last few years. That is not something I grew up around. That is not something I knew or understood. You know, I grew up watching my very thin mom hate on her body every Mm -hmm. day, go from diet to diet to diet. And then me being told I have to follow her on this diet pattern. Oh. I, I look back and I look at pictures of myself as a kid and I don't see an obese kid. Like I see mm-hmm. a more athletically built kid. I yeah, see right. a, like, I've always been bigger. I've always had like really broad shoulders. Like, you know, I wasn't too thick skinny like my friends, but I don't see a child with an obesity problem. Um, and no, so- you're- it was just your frame. Like that's your yeah. body type. Yeah. Like there's just no way you could be like pencil, th- like thin, like yeah. that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. No, like but I'm the same way. Like parents, I have hips. What's going to happen? Yeah. But to my parents, since I wasn't like super skinny, like mm-hmm. my other like relatives or like my friends, you know, that mm-hmm. meant that I had a weight issue. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But my dad is very vain. Again, Mm -hmm. I love him. We have a really good relationship now. I just want to preface this with that. Yeah. He was really hard on me growing up. And then, you know, the more he pressured me to lose weight, I almost think it was, I was a really good kid. I got good grades. I, you know, joined all the clubs. I did all the things like, okay. so I think food was like my rebellion. Mm -hmm. That's how I, that's how I rebelled against my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was almost like my way of taking back control because he was always, you know, my parents were pretty controlling. Like I got good grades because I was like, you know, yeah, on it. That's what, that's what my thought was is yeah. Like drill sergeant. Yeah. They were just on top of you. Yeah. Yeah. About it. Yeah. And so it's like, I think the, the food was definitely like my comfort. I thought that that was my way of having control, some control over my life. And the more my dad pressured me to lose weight, the more weight I gained. Um, and, you know, and then I lost the weight, it, like I said, when I was like in my twenties and mm-hmm. that still never felt good enough. And I think that that was also a contributing factor to me putting the weight back on because, I, I think I was also in it for the wrong reasons. Like yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Cause you probably thought, oh, if you finally get down to the weight, then my dad would be nice to me and yeah. not talk to me the way he talks to me. And then you realize it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just doesn't matter. Cause you've always have been a big person and that will always be in their brains. And for mm-hmm. whatever reason mm-hmm. that they feel yeah. like they need to do that and talk like that. So well, and it was even like, little things I don't even know you know sometimes looking back it's like I don't know that my dad even would mean some of the things that he would say I don't know that he actually meant it to be malicious or right. or had ill intent behind it I think some of it was just literally like you know if I if I didn't work out one of the days he would just be like oh are you not working out today well in my mind I took that as like oh not working right. out yes you blew your program you know mm-hmm. and so I just took those little comments as like negative digs or nags Mm -hmm. or like, again, like him trying to be in control or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I would self-sabotage. So when I went through the process of surgery, when I decided that I was ready for this, I knew that I had to, because I was still living at home at the time. I was still living with my parents. So it was Mm -hmm. like, I have to get this figured out. Like I, I can't continue to self-sabotage. I can't continue to let this relationship with my dad, you know, have this hold over me like this. Um, I, I need to do this for myself. I, I have yeah. to figure out how to make this journey just about me and not about him. So yeah. that's when I really started working with a therapist is, was to work on that specifically. That was going to be my next question is if you talked with a therapist. Yeah. Yeah. So, and one of the things that she told me, which was like mind blowing, you know, Mm -hmm. what? Uh Um, moment. (laughs) Yes, it was. So it was in one of our very first sessions that we had, 
and we were talking about this very same thing and you know how I feel like I I just want to take back control from him and she said something along the lines of you know when you um when he says something to you and then you go and self-sabotage or you go and eat as your way of taking back control. That's not you taking control. That's you giving him control. Mm -hmm. That's you giving his words power over you and control mm -hmm. over you. So you've actually been giving him control over your life this whole time mm -hmm. while your, your life is like, you're losing control. You're losing control over your life and it's spiraling. And so that was like this huge aha moment of, you know, I, I think one of the biggest things in this process for success is owning your journey mm -hmm. and realizing that you can't blame anyone else anymore. Cause that's the other thing. I, I, I always have my dad to blame. Like it's his fault. I'm fat. It's his mm -hmm. fault. I have this issue with food, this relationship with food. It's his fault that, you know, it was just, I could always blame him for it. Right. Yeah. And I realized in that moment, working with my therapist, I can't, if I'm going to be successful on this journey, I can't blame anyone else anymore. Like I, I have to take ownership. I have to step into this. I have to realize I've done this to myself. Yes. Maybe when I was a kid, I didn't have as so much control, but honestly, from like later high school years on, I have, it's been me letting, letting this um, issue, you know, spiral. And I had to own up to that and own my journey and realize that it's within my power to now take back control. And I think that that's mm -hmm. one of the things that has honestly helped me the most on my journey. I like that yeah. a lot. Taking back the control mm -hmm. is big. It's yeah. huge because you have to admit things to yourself. Yeah. Yes. Things that we don't want to admit yeah. to ourselves at all. Absolutely. And I would say like, even towards your parents, like as a parent, like I get it, but the whole, like not realizing what you're saying is going to affect them because, oh yeah, there's tons of times where I know, like I've said something to Dylan and been like, oh, that could be scarring later. That, this could be a problem. <laughs> you know, like you just don't know some of the things yeah. because like the way that he might've said the whole, like, oh, you didn't work out today. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, you started spiraling thinking he was just being negative immediately when it could have just been like, Oh, you're not working out today. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like we, in, we misinterpret things like we're human, we're going to. And like, mm -hmm. so I know damn well I've said things and probably will mess them up and I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, yeah. but that's the thing. It's like, you don't mean those things. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's also there. I would have to say. Yeah. I like, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to touch base on the fact of like, yeah, you like how you were saying, like, you know, after high school and in your twenties, like you had control, but it's like, like a what you were doing, you could have done some things, but also like you didn't have the tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, like, exactly. That's kind of yeah. hard because you didn't have yeah. those tools. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. No, I and I really like the fact that you were saying like giving him control. Like you were literally like he didn't have any control the whole time. Like you were literally just taking it and giving it to him every yeah. time yeah. you chose. Because that's the thing is like you chose to go turn to food. Uh -huh. Right. It was your choice. Yes. And that gave him power because you're like manifesting that in your head. Cause you're doing exactly yes. what he thought you were doing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. I mean, and the other big thing is, you know, so like I keep saying that me and my dad have a good relationship now. Well, I think another big part of this journey. So like ownership is huge. And that, I think that has to turn into like, almost like a habit again for lasting success. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly be checking yourself and owning up to things all along the journey. Like I, you know, I've had to do it even like last week, like, okay, I'm like, I have not been on track this week. I need to check mm -hmm. myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm in control here. No one else. I can't blame anyone else. I can't blame my work schedule. I can't blame, mm -hmm. you know, this is on me. So I need to take ownership and step back up here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that needs to become like a, a habit that you get into. Yeah. Um, but then also forgiveness, like that's been a huge part of it too. And forgiving myself, forgiving, mm -hmm. you know, like owning up and realizing that I, I have done this to myself. These are my choices and I need to own those choices now and, and decide to make better ones if I want to change my life. But then I also have to be able to forgive myself mm -hmm. for what yeah. I've done and mm -hmm. forgive my dad. Like that was a big thing too. I, in order to still like 
again, not let his words have power over me, not let, not let this thing continue to fester. I had to realize he's human. Mm -hmm. Um, I know deep down my dad just wants what's best for me. I know deep down he, you know, just wanted me to be healthy and he just wanted me to, you know, be thriving and, and the, mm -hmm. all these things, but he didn't know how to communicate that in a better way. Did yeah. he go about it the right way? No, but mm -hmm. he's human. Mm -hmm. He did the best that he thought he could do, you know, yeah. and I need to just forgive him and realize he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. I've messed up and he still loves me. I still love him. Like now it's time for me to focus on my journey and moving forward from mm -hmm. here and not letting that continue to hold me back. So you kind of almost have to be um, a little bit selfish. Like when it comes to your journey is yeah. you have to be like, this is my journey, not anybody else's. And I get to do the way I want to do it. And it could take a while and you can be selfish for a while until you figure it out mm -hmm. and yeah. get into a good rhythm. So. Oh, I'm so selfish. Oh, I think being selfish is an important part of this journey. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You are the most important person in your life. And mm -hmm. if you're not doing things daily to take care of you, then you're going about your days wrong. Like mm -hmm. you, you need to be prioritizing yourself and but yeah, no, that, that is a big, you know, again, realizing that this is my journey. And I feel like what you said there kind of reminded me of another piece of this. So I knew that even though I was working, like I was working on forgiving him and owning my journey and moving forward, like I kind of, even from the very beginning of my bariatric journey, I knew what I wanted this to look like for myself. I was done dieting. I was done restricting things from my life. I was done going on the no bread diets, the no, you know, you can't have any sugar at all. You can't have right. bread at all. Like I was, that is not why I did bariatric surgery. Mm -hmm. I did bariatric surgery to teach myself finally about how to live a balanced life and have moderation in. You right. know, in the beginning, you definitely have to be a little more strict, but I knew even before I, I even had surgery that I was going to treat myself mm. every week. I knew that I was going to be incorporating treats. Like once I got farther out to keep me sane, to keep mm. me on track to, cause yeah. I know that I know myself and I know that that's, you know, I, I wanted to create a lifestyle that I could maintain for the rest of my life and that mm -hmm. I enjoy. And so that was my goal. And I knew that I was going to have to be really stern in the fact in owning my journey and in owning that this is my process. I know what I'm doing. This is my body mm -hmm, yeah. because again, you know, if my dad sees me having, you know, like an Oreo cookie or something. And I say that because I literally just had some Oreo cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. If my dad, yeah. If he like sees me eating an Oreo cookie, he's going to be like, can you have that? You know, we all face right. that, right? It's mm -hmm. bariatric patients, people saying like, can you mm -hmm. have that after surgery? Are you, mm -hmm. are you allowed to have that? Like, mm -hmm. and if you let that get to you, that can cause some self-sabotaging behaviors. And I, mm. I didn't want to fall back into that cycle again of, mm. you know, so I, I had to get again, like hard in this mindset that this is my journey. I know what I'm doing. So if anyone comes at me with, um, like toxic comments like that, mm. I need to block it and just let it go. Just, yeah. Whoop, nope. This is, this is fine for me because I know what I'm doing and I know mm -hmm. that this is okay. And I know that this fits into my plan. So yeah, yeah. Don't feed into it. You're like, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. 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 I wish I had learned that more early on. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. The whole process of like allowing yourself to be, to get treats or to like have something that is more indulgent maybe because I was so restrictive that once I hit my goal weight, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was like, uh, what, like, what do I eat? What do I like? I didn't know. And so I wish that I had come across what you're saying more early on of being yeah. like, okay, I'm going to plan my week. And I know that on this day, I'm going to be 
having an indulgent moment. Yeah. 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 And then exactly. the next day, the next meal, I'll get right back into it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's what it's all about. And that's honestly, since probably month one, yeah, well, oh. not like, I mean, like, I guess month two, <laughs> like month one, you're on liquids and purees and all that. But like mm-hmm. since month two, when you can start, you know, figuring out what your normal diet is going to look like, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I've really worked to, um, you know, kind of the mindset I've worked to have around food is that I'm no longer going to restrict myself. I'm going to have, I'm going to learn how to have a healthy balance in my life, something I've never had before. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I've been really successful at it. I, you know, I think a lot of people when, when they hear like balance or, or, you know, that I treat myself or I have, you know, I almost feel like they, they think that looks like I'm eating pizza whenever I want, or I'm eating, you know, cookies whenever I, it's no, you're Mm -hmm. not giving into every single craving. You're not, you're doing, but you're, you're allowing yourself these little treats Mm -hmm. on occasion, you know, or like, you're not allowing yourself to eat a sleeve of Oreos. You're letting yourself have two Oreos and you're feeling satisfied from that. And you're moving on. Like, Mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. It's, Um, you know, and learning that has honestly, again, I think that's another thing that has really contributed to my success is learning how to live, um, a more balanced life and have moderation, like, Mm -hmm. which again, no diet teaches you that diets don't teach that. That's Mm -hmm. why they don't work. Maybe you can Mm -hmm. lose the weight on the diet, but then once the diet's over, like you said, yeah, you start gaining. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think that you did? Like, is there any like, like documentation that you try to do to help with that? Like with the planning and making sure you got the treats that you wanted and like, like food prepping and stuff. Yeah. Well, not just food prepping and and the essence of like, how could you tell someone else like to Mm -hmm. how to learn to be mindful and try to get their treats in and like, what would you tell them? Like how to be successful? Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is something, you know, like I work a lot with, with my clients and stuff meal planning. Meal planning is so important. You got to mm-hmm. plan out your meals. Now, I think people confuse meal planning and meal prepping. I think mm-hmm. they think it's the same thing. It's mm-hmm. not the same thing. I Meal prepping can seem very intimidating and I get that. Meal planning is literally where you're just sitting out and you're mapping out what your meals look like for the week. And honestly, if you're not doing that, I don't know how you grocery shop. Like, yeah, you have to do it with well, shopping. You just don't. And then <laughs> you get down to cheese sticks and almonds and almonds, and that's what you eat. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh no. <laughs> I know. I need help. I need I need serious help because. <laughs> I just, I don't, I haven't gone grocery shopping. Like what well, we did this last week. Yeah. Cause I haven't, yeah. cause she had to go. And so I went with her, but yeah. I think it, it's probably been like three weeks. Oh, well, I no. think, well, I yeah. think you're also learning, like, how do you shop live for one person? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Cause typically it's cooking for one, a, it's, it's different. Yeah. Hard. yeah. Cause when you plan out a week, normally you're planning for like a, your, it can be a roommate. It can be your parent. There's always someone, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, typically you can talk to someone like, Hey, what are we going to do? What do you think? And like Uh build a list. And one of you guys goes to the store, the other, you guys both go like, it's a thing, you know? So you don't, you don't have that thing right now. No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Do you meal or meal plan with Scott? So I, I pretty much take control of that. I, so Scott will eat anything like he's not picky. And I'm the one that I, I guess maybe that's another selfish thing about me. So, you know, I feel like he's fit. He's always been fit. He's always, you know, he's trim. Like I'm more worried about myself. And so when I'm planning for my week, I, I kind of take more of my needs into consideration, I guess. Um, and so, and this, so I'll take you through my meal planning process. Yes, and this yes. is literally Please. how We're like, I've done okay. it. <laughs> this is basically how I've done it from like, again, once, once I could transition to like solid foods and starting to figure out like what I could eat. Now there does take some time to figure out like what you enjoy again and stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause 
you know, you might find that you can't tolerate certain oh, yeah. proteins or something for a while. But mm-hmm. anyways, so I always start with first, like when I sit down to, to plan things out, I try to figure out like, what am I craving? I literally base my meal prep off of what I'm craving. Like, okay. oh man, I'm really craving like, oh, we haven't had enchiladas in a long time. I'm craving enchiladas. Okay. We're going to do enchiladas for dinner. Um, and then I'm like, oh, okay. What, like, what sounds good for lunch? Usually if we have something kind of like heavy for dinner, I want something kind of lighter for lunch. Yeah. Is, okay. So then I'll do something like, um, maybe like a, one of my favorite salads for lunches, or maybe it'll be, um, like just like a turkey and a turkey bacon sandwich with chips for lunches or something like that. But I do really try to sit and think like, okay, what's something we haven't had in a while and what sounds really good and what am I kind of in the mood for? Like what, right. you know, what am I kind of craving? And, um, and then that's what, then I go out to like Pinterest and I'll find a recipe that sounds good. And then I usually just make little tweaks to make it a little more like bariatric friendly. So mm. earlier on in the process, like if I was making something like enchiladas, you know, I would definitely make sure I'm either using like a, a low carb wrap or maybe even doing like the zucchini enchiladas or something mm. like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, now I, I can do like a regular tortilla. I do still like those extreme wellness tortillas or whatever mm. those okay. are um, yeah. or, or some of the low carb tortillas, but, um, but yeah, so I just, I'll make little tweaks to the recipe to make it more bariatric friendly. Like maybe I bump up the protein, like maybe I add more chicken than it calls for, okay. um, stuff like that. So, um, and then I'll also plan out like, okay, what sounds good, um, you know, for my treats, like what am I craving mm-hmm. for treats? If I feel like I'm really craving chocolate chip cookies, then I'll try to make like my protein mm-hmm. chocolate chip cookies so for good. the week. Yeah. Or literally, like I said, this week, my treats are Oreos. Like I, I made those Oreo truffles last week and we have Oreos in Mm -hmm. the house. So I'm just letting myself have two Oreos, you know, after my lunch, like that's my plan. And I write that in. That's part of my plan. Um, and yeah, I, I basically, I plan for a Monday through Friday Mm. and I, I plan out my meals, my treats, my snacks. I have everything written out. I know exactly what I'm going to have every day. And I keep it really simple. I eat the same thing every day. I don't change it up because that keeps your grocery bill lower. That Mm -hmm. helps with meal prep. It helps make it a lot easier. And if I'm making foods that I actually enjoy, I don't mind it. Like I don't Mm -hmm. get, you know, people are always like, oh no, I need very like, I need to eat something different every day. Well, Mm. I feel like if you were making food that you truly enjoy, like you would be able to eat, you know, you wouldn't mind eating that same thing Monday. Yeah, it's true. It's that's very true. Yeah. Cause my chicken salad, it lasts all, all week long. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So what's your, uh, first off, I want to say that, that, that is mind blowing to me. The concept of like, what am I craving? I've never thought that. Yeah, use in, it. In all of the history of me grocery shopping and making lists, I've never sat down and said, "What do I? What am I craving? What do I want to eat?" Mm-hmm. Yes. Like it's always like, "Okay, what's in the freezer? What's in the like?" I always go off of that, and so that's yeah. very mind blowing to me. So thank you for that. Well, it's, yeah, it's, you're using your your cravings to help you throughout the week. So is that? What yeah, you're I. So my philosophy is don't fight your cravings, work with your cravings, because if you try to work against your cravings, that's what leads to binges down the road. That's mm-hmm. what leads to this whole, like getting off track, getting on track. Like if you're enjoying your foods and then if you allow for flexibility in your plan, like, like the treats I have every day, or, you know, if we get to Friday and I'm just, maybe I am kind of tired of the meal prep by Friday, then it's like, okay, I'm going to let myself have something different for lunch today. Maybe I'll go get something for lunch or maybe. Um, and then I always leave my weekends open to be flexible. Like usually we'll have some leftovers on the weekends that we can eat for a couple meals, but then weekends are also when we'll like 
have do like dinners with friends or brunch or go out for dinner or something like that. Like I always, and that's something else like leading up to the weekend, I'll start to notice like what I'm craving, you know, like pay attention throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Like if a really strong craving comes on for like a burger, then I'll be like, okay, well, I have a plan for this week. I'm going to stick to my plan this week. I know that this weekend we're probably going to eat out on Saturday night. So we'll go get a burger. So like, yeah, there's really never a time where I'm, I'm feeling like there's something I can't have. Mm -hmm. And so that then when I'm around it, I feel like I have to eat a ton of it, you know, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm in, I think that that like basing my meal prep around what I'm craving helps me stay on my plan. It helps Mm -hmm. like, I don't ever need to go off my plan because I enjoy it. Like, so it's fine. Yeah. I, I love that whole concept. Seriously. The whole thing that can totally help people literally change their lifestyle Mm -hmm. so they can feel no restriction. Mm -hmm. They can just figure out who they are, what they actually like. And that's, we need to change the word of selfishness. I don't, I think it's more selfish if a person goes, Hey, you're not paying attention to me right now. And cause you're focusing on yourself. I think they're being selfish. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. It shouldn't be like, we're allowed to care about our health and our bodies mm-hmm. and actually yes. figure out what we like and don't like. And if I don't yeah. like, something, I'm sorry, I don't like to be able to be mad at me for it. Just mm-hmm. don't like it. Yeah. yeah. Like it doesn't hurt your, it doesn't do anything to you for me not to like something. No, I think some people view it as a selfish act Mm -hmm. when you take control of your life and you, you know, you know, like weight loss surgery is an all in like consuming thing that you do because you can't just like half come in. Like, you know, if you're really super committed, you are going to like immerse yourself in this world. And, you know, it's, I think it's very selfish of friends to view that as a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're literally just making your life longer and taking control. Yeah. And I view like my meal prep day. So that's something that I've had to work really hard on. So I think, and you guys let me know if you feel the same way sometimes, but you know, if, if we have like our weekend, right. Our weekend comes up and we don't really have any plans with other people, right. Mm -hmm. We don't have set plans to go somewhere or with another person, but we do have plans with ourselves. Like we've already kind of thought of like, Oh, I I'm not going anywhere this weekend. I'm not doing anything with anyone. Um, I know I need a meal prep. I know like, I'm going to do some organizing in the house. I'm going to do this, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you kind of create this list of things that you want to work on for yourself. And then, you know, Sally Sue comes along and is like, Oh, what are you doing this weekend? Do you want to get together? Mm -hmm. And you almost feel bad. Like, like you don't have an excuse. Like, like you shouldn't say, Mm-hmm. that you have like you can't say you have plans because mm-hmm. you don't have plans with anyone else right 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 but you have plans with yourself right yeah yeah mm-hmm. so and, and that's that is something I've had to personally work really hard on is realizing mm-hmm. like especially Sundays are my day like mm-hmm. if if friends want to get together with me we can do that on Saturday mornings and I know that that might sound really rigid like of course there are some special occasions where, right. Yeah. You know, but if it's like, you know, yeah, friends want to get together. My mom wants to get together, whatever it is. Well, typically that needs to happen on a Saturday morning. Um, my Saturday afternoons are reserved for Scott Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And my Sundays are for me. That is when I get my house in order. That is when I get my meal prep done. That is taking care of me. Um, and I literally view my meal prep as me time. Like I make it enjoyable. I put a movie on, I really nice. like set things up, you know, maybe I'll even like pour a little glass of wine or something like, you know, yeah. I make it enjoyable for myself. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to be here for probably four hours. Let's have a little fun. Um, wow. I like yeah. that technique because it actually is a real technique because Jana told us if you can find something that you like. Mm-hmm. with what you don't like and you do yes. them together enough you will eventually like what you're doing yes yes and then you'll get the the, the thing done whether that's meal prep exercise laundry whatever mm-hmm. like and like again going back to you know I, I choose recipes that I enjoy as well mm-hmm. and so it makes the cooking more fun too because it's yeah. like 
you know, and sometimes I'm like experimenting because I'm like, mm. ooh, I've really been craving this. Let's see if we can like tweak it to make it, you know, whatever, like higher protein or whatever it is. And so I'm doing some little experimenting with it. And that's fun too. And so I just, yeah, I, I, I view my meal prep as me time and I am mm. very selfish. I said that earlier on and I don't care. And I think that to be successful on this journey, you have to learn how to be selfish, but you also have to realize that it's not a bad thing. Just like you guys were saying, like yeah. this, you, you are the most important person in your life. And if you want to be there for other people, again, this sounds, it sounds cliche and it's, we say it all the time, but you have to be there for yourself first. And it's so true. Like you got to get yourself sorted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like yeah. the airplane emergency thing that we talk about. Like yes. you have to put the mask on first before you can help mm-hmm. others. So yes. it's the same yes. thing. You need to be able to walk around before, before I can actually help other people. Like, mm-hmm. so if I'm 300 pounds and I can barely move, I'm not actually doing good for anybody, Yeah, let yeah. alone myself. So yeah let me take control of my life and get it back. So that way I can hang out with you and do shit all the time. Cause with my journey, what I noticed, I love experiencing things. Mm-hmm. I don't want to like, like where my money goes, it's not on material stuff. It's, it's going places. I want to see yes. things, touch things, have fun, meet people. Like that's my jam. So it's like, because before when you're 300 pounds, you feel like, so just trapped in the body. Like you can't do anything. And yeah. if you do, they're all like looking at you and pointing at you, like, look what she's doing. And it's like, mm-hmm. can people just leave you, like leave people alone and just stop with the judging? I think that would just really, that would be awesome. nice. <laughs> yeah. It would be really nice. I actually saw on woke up like Des's uh, profile today. She had posted a picture of a side-by-side of her at the gym at her, one of her heaviest. Mm. And then one of today, obviously. And she had written in the caption that it's one of the only photos that she has of herself heavy in the gym because she was so self-conscious yeah. that she was going to become a meme yeah. or get laughed at for taking, like for doing the wrong thing in the gym. Yeah. And oh, that's I just would... like, totally like, that's exactly what it was. Like yeah. the fear of people looking at you judging you making comments about mm-hmm. your body like how inappropriate is that mm-hmm. like yeah. yeah it doesn't make any sense and that's actually why I never took a photo ever yeah. in a gym unless oh yeah not until I was like a year or like probably six eight months out of my surgery yeah when I, was, when I would take a photo of me in a gym I felt awkward mm-hmm. I felt like yeah because I remember it now like croc center right in front of the big mirrors I would do the squat bench and I would do deadlifts and I wanted to take a photo because I was like there's like 35 pounds on each side. And that was pretty, <laughs> but then I felt so awkward. I'm like, Oh, that, that other guy that's like all muscly is over there. And they're looking at me like, mm. what is she doing? And I'm just like, Oh yeah. Like, I can't even take a fucking photo <laughs> Yeah, without getting looked at. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. And uh, nobody cares. No one actually cares. No. It, like it's li- literally like, again, you're giving them power yeah, because no, exactly. you're letting their, like something that hasn't even happened. Right. You have exactly. no idea what they're thinking but you're letting it control what you're doing. Yep. Unfortunately it's happened. You know, it, it has happened, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we see it and, and then it gets blown up on social media and then that just feeds more into people's fears and Mm -hmm. it, it make, you know, yeah, it creates this. And then we do, we build it up in our mind that that's what's going to happen to us, even though literally the odds of that happening to you are so, so, so low. Like, yeah, no one cares at the gym. They're there to focus on themselves. They're not. And if they do notice you more than likely, they're probably like, oh, dang, that's awesome. Yeah. They're like, holy shit. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. exactly. It's like when people are walking down. Oh, go ahead. That's not what's going through our heads in that, in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you. Words (laughs) are hard. It's okay. Words (laughs) are hard today. (laughs) Um, It's like when I see somebody walking down the road. And I'm like, you know, my, sometimes my brain will like snap judge whatever they're doing, like what, what they're wearing or whatever. Yeah. And then I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's rein that back in because they're walking. Yeah. They're doing yeah. nothing wrong. So yeah. like they're minding their own business. They're not making any judgments about me in my car. So let's just like, cause you know, sometimes your brain just automatically does it. Mm-hmm. And so you have oh, to yeah. retrain it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are kind of trained to just like, first thing we see is like, is a negative 
response. Yeah. It's never mm -hmm. like we have to train ourselves to actually say positive things to ourselves, mm -hmm. to others, because like it feels awkward sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or people think like you want something just because you're like actually like giving them a compliment and you're like, mm -hmm. no, yeah. I don't want anything. I just thought yeah. like your shoes look awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> or you're looking great today. Like, I thought you might want to know. Cause like I noticed. <laughs> I felt better when people were commenting. So I was like, oh, then I should just do it to other people. Like, yeah. And again, well, strangers. I've also, I've also noticed that like literally on the days when I am feeling the best about myself, when I am like truly loving myself and I'm feeling great, those are the days when I am like the most free with compliments. I've yeah. noticed. Like, Mm -hmm. those are the days where I go to the grocery store. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, your hair is so cute. Oh my gosh. I love your shirt. Like, yeah. And, and then the days when I'm like hating on myself, those are the days when I'm finding it the easiest then to like the opposite. Like that's when I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is she wearing? And it's, uh -huh. it's so true. The whole like bully complex, right? Like mm -hmm. they judge like they say mean things because they're unhappy with themselves like that's right. so true that's what's going on like I'm yeah. unhappy with myself and so I'm taking the focus off of me and I'm putting it on someone else yeah you're pretty yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you're literally imprinting or projecting onto someone else yeah yeah, yeah. misery loves company yeah it's yeah. a real thing <laughs> it is a very real thing I I yeah so let's talk about your coaching Oh, and, okay. and all about your, like what your vision for the future looks like doing coaching. And I mean, just talking to you, I'm like, man, I need to be coached by you because you <laughs> are so motivating. Like I want to go home and like meal prep my whole life. <laughs> Do it. Girl, so. I would love to coach you. Like <laughs> seriously. Um, yeah. So I, right now I'm offering a few different services. So I offer my, like kind of just the standard is like the bariatric coaching call. That's a one-on-one -on -one call, one hour session. Um, and it's literally like whatever the client wants to work on. Like if, mm. if that client wants to work on nutrition, we'll work on nutrition. Um, but if the client wants to work more on like building habits or working on self-love, like, um, you know, those mental things, you know, more mindset issues. Mm -hmm. We'll focus on that. So we, those sessions are completely like whatever the client wants to work on around their bariatric journey and what they're struggling with the most. That mm -hmm. is what we'll focus our, our time and attention on. Cool. Um, and then I have my personal training. Ooh. So that's a separate service that is like right now I'm doing the monthly. So you pay for a whole month. Um, I give you three to four workouts a week and, um, you get like a, a monthly coaching call with me included in that. Um, then I have just my nutrition coaching. That's very specific. Like we don't really go into any other mindset things or anything like that. We really just focus on nutrition, like calories, what your, where your protein's at meal planning, uh, guidance, meal prepping guidance, you know, um, that it's just mainly focused on nutrition. And yeah. then I have like my, what I call my bariatric wellness, um, service, which is kind of all encompassing. That one mm. is you get weekly coaching calls. You get the personal training for a month. Um, we work on nutrition together and, um, yeah. And we're also working on building those habits, working on your mindset. I mean, that's like truly the, the full that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, that, that's fantastic. That's so fantastic. Yeah. yeah, that's right now. I have, um, I think I have about 12 clients right now and I'm loving it. Like I'm still working full time for mm -hmm. the bank. So I'm doing this, you know, mainly of like the evenings and stuff. Um, I have like three clients that are doing personal training right now. I have several that are just doing the like weekly or by every other week coaching calls with me. And then I have like two that are just nutrition clients. Um, and I have one that I'm loving and I would love to work with more clients like this. I have one client that's like, or no, now I have two. Oh, that's right. I just got another one. Nice. I have, so I have two clients right now that are pre-op. Okay. And oh. going through the process, 
you know, and, and awesome. the, the one that I've been working with the longest, I'm not going to say her name, but she's just like my rock star. Like I just Aww. love her so much. Um, and she came to me because she had a consultation with a general surgeon about weight loss surgery. And this general surgeon just had her scared to death. Like, oh no, told her, you know, like, well, you'll never be able to drink again. You'll never be able to have carbs again. You'll never be able to enjoy life again. You'll never be, you know, like, but you need the surgery or you're going to die. Like just totally scared her, you know? And, um, literally so the thing that we want them to not do. Yeah. yeah like we yeah. did everything. We are so scared of having yeah. that. And he did. So she came to me afterwards. She found me, um, on Instagram and she messaged me and, you know, just like this huge long message of all these things she was afraid of. And, and she was like, I just don't understand. Cause it looks like you're out here, like living life and enjoying life. And based on what the surgeon told me, like, I, I can't have pasta ever again. And I can't have all the, you know, and like, I'm in my early twenties. Like, it just seems like if I have bariatric surgery, I'm, I'm not going to be able to actually enjoy life or live normally ever again. And, and so I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah. we had, we had one session and, you know, we just worked through all those fears and I convinced her to go get a second opinion mm-hmm. and, Good. Um, she then went and got a second opinion and that one went great. And so then, you know, she got super excited, but then she also is dealing, still dealing with a lot of fears and doubts. Right. So Mm -hmm. every session we're continuing to work through those and get her through the process, help her as she's going through her appointments, going through the, um, the process. And now she's working with me with the personal training. She like bumped it up to the, the personal training level. So, Yay. um, I've got her meal planning. I've got her working out and she's already lost seven pounds. Like she's still, you know, Ooh. she's still free up and everything, but it's just like, she's like ideal client, you know? And it's like, I want to work with more people like, like this, like taking them through literally the whole process. Mm-hmm. Like I want to be your coach from the pre-op through the post-op, I want to guide you through this process and, um, you know, help, help make this the best, most transformative year of your life. Like Mm -hmm. that is truly my goal is I'm going to, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm literally a text away if you need anything and I will be your guide. I will be your Gandalf Mm -hmm. through the middle of weight loss surgery. (laughs) Well, I think middle earth of weight loss surgery. (laughs) Well, because that's exactly what you want out of a coach. Like Mm -hmm. the one that will go all the way with you. So Mm -hmm. how did you get into coaching? Like what, what like spurred that on? So honestly, it was through working with my coach. (laughs) I've had, you know, I've had therapists, I've had personal trainers, I've had coaches. Like I'm, I believe in Like I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't had coaches along the way. Mm -hmm. And, um, about two years ago, that's really what also inspired me to like really ramp up my Instagram page and, um, you know, start sharing my story more and stuff like that. Cause I just kind of started to realize like, I have a true passion for health and fitness. Like through my journey, I've just really come to love nutrition, fitness, all around wellness. Um, and anytime anyone would ask me questions like nutrition questions or, what my advice on like weight loss or anything like that, even before I had my certifications, I would get so fired up. Like I, mm-hmm. I could just talk about that stuff like all day long, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so working with my life coach, it's kind of like, I think it's time for you to go like embrace this and yeah. take this on. Um, I was kind of honestly like depressed with where I was in my full-time job. Like mm-hmm. I just, I'm not, in it anymore. You know, I, I'm not enjoying that anymore. And, and she's like, you, you know, this is where your passion is. This is, you need to just go for it and you're successful. Mm-hmm. And there are people out there that need your help. And so it was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go for it. So, um, you know, yeah, I ramped up the Instagram page. I, uh, got my certifications. I'm still working on other certifications. Um, and so I'm, I'm not done yet, even with educating myself. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got started. And, um, now I just hired another coach. I hired a business coach. So that's exciting because I'm really, 
I have my services, you know, that I'm offering right now, but I'm still, I feel like I still struggle with like, um, you know, just really like the marketing and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that and, and feeling confident walking, fully walking into this role. And so I think that this will be like a really, really good uh, move for me to kind of take it to the next level. So, yeah, no, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Do your passion girl. Yeah. That's when, once we figured out what ours was, we're just like, Oh, this is what we should be doing. Like this is where all of our like hard work and blood, sweat and tears go into. Yeah. I was like, yeah. as you were saying that, I was just saying like, Mel, Mel, that's, that's literally Mel. That's like what we talk about mm-hmm. is that yeah. she is like, she does, she has passion for her job. She wants to do great at it, but her true passion lies with this podcast. Yeah. So, and helping people and helping people realize that this is not a bad thing surgery is like the best thing for yeah. some people yeah. it's not for everybody so I saw and I don't know if anyone else saw this post yesterday I'm not going to call out who posted it or name a handle or anything but there was a post yesterday that really bothered me um it was a bariatric page okay. you know Someone in the talking, community yeah talking about how uh she you know bariatric surgery isn't cool she didn't she didn't lose Mm -hmm. weight the cool way and she went on to say you know that the way that she had to lose weight through surgery was to save her life like Mm -hmm. she she had to have the surgery to save her life but she doesn't want people to think that this is the cool thing to do and then at the end of it she talked about how we should not be normalizing bariatric surgery because this is not something um, to be taken lightly. This is not something. And it just really irked me because it's like, okay, we're not saying normalized bariatric surgery because yeah. we're saying that this is something to be taken lightly. This is not something to be taken mm-hmm. lightly. This is a life altering, um, procedure, yeah, but, um, we are saying this needs to be normalized because there are people out there that need this mm-hmm. surgery to save their lives, just mm-hmm. like you, yep. but they're terrified to do it because of the stigmas around it. They're terrified mm-hmm. to do it because they're afraid of someone judging them for having bariatric surgery, like easy way out. Well, yeah. yeah. And the so cool that just way, really, apparently. that really bothered me. I was like, first of all, this is a very hypocritical post. I don't know yeah. if you yeah. like, see your own hypocrisy in this, mm-hmm. but second of all, this goes against everything I stand for. Like I 100% am out here advocating for weight loss surgery and wanting to normalize mm-hmm. weight loss surgery. Mm-hmm. We need to make this more accessible for people who really mm-hmm. need it. Like this is a life-changing, life-altering, life-saving procedure. And um, I think Rissa Re- Recharged um, shared a statistic a while back about like of all the thousands of people that look into bariatric surgery, only mm-hmm. like it was something really small, like 2% go through with it or something. Yeah. It's really and, low. It's yeah. Real, real and low. it was like, whoa, okay. People like Yes, this procedure, it should not be taken lightly. It is a surgery, but we also need to stop looking at it as like this drastic thing that's only for 500 pound or above Mm -hmm. people, you know, like, no, there are people who are 200 pounds, but just have never really been able to actually lose weight or get control Mm -hmm. of their weight that get weight loss surgery and it changes their life. Like this can be for anyone that has struggled with weight or has, Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe like some core morbid, core morbidities or whatever. Yeah. I can't figure out. But, um, you know, that they, they need help on their weight loss Mm -hmm. journey. And so it, yeah, I don't know. That just really like, yeah, that pissed me off just hearing you like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) that thing because like the whole like um not taking it lightly mm-hmm. one you do not get to say what I take lightly at all like you don't know who yeah, we are yeah. mm-hmm. and we, we all know everybody in this goddamn community actually like didn't take it lightly like they did so much research or like they were scared shitless like that's not them taking it lightly mm-hmm. if and- you get bariatric surgery this is not your like you've tried like this is your last resort you know like Mm -hmm. the people that get bariatric surgery we're literally at our end like well and these people that the way that I took it was like 
So you're just afraid you, you think that people are going to just eat a bunch of food so they can have surgery later. And yeah. that's yeah. not at all what's happening. Like there's yeah. real obesity diseases. Like yes. there's actual like stuff in your bloodline, like your genetics, that's going to make you like susceptible to certain things. So like those people really need the surgery mm-hmm. and they are probably scared to do the surgery too. And they're not going to take it lightly. So it's just yeah. like, we need to normalize the surgery is okay. And what people don't realize it's not just a surgery. It's like, it's what comes with the surgery. It's a yes. whole incorporating yes. life yes. change. Yeah. It's uh-huh. not just the one thing that you do that day. It's everything wrapped around it. That's why you have to see so many different people. Mm-hmm. Well, and I love the analogy, like when you need a hip replacement or a knee replacement, you're not saying like, well, did you try walking on it? <laughs> like, it's like, uh, no, like nobody fights you. If you say, oh, I need to have a hip replacement. Right. Or yeah. a knee replacement. Or, or a knee. Or, yeah. Like, no, I don't want to give it to you. Cause you might get on a skateboard in like a two years from now and ruin that. knee. Yeah. That we paid for. So yeah, I don't think we can do that. Exactly. Like there, like nobody questions any other surgery except for weight loss surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you that get, shouldn't be the way the world works. You can get calf implants and no one cares. But if I just want to like get a surgery to make myself healthier, that's a fucking yeah. problem. I, I don't yeah. really And get people it. don't really blink an eye at like plastic surgery anymore. Like you can say, oh, I'm getting a tummy tuck and nobody says anything to say. Yeah. But you say the words weight loss surgery and there's all, there's like yeah. a fire that consumes yeah, that so conversation. It's so weird. It's it so is. weird. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it either because I, I think- should- it's frustrating. And I think it's partially like jealousy for most people. Like when they're being negative, it's, it's probably coming from a spot of like, I don't want them to get smaller than me. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Well, and what I think it is too, is like, they're like, well, if they get weight loss surgeries and that means I probably should have it too. And then I have to admit that I need Mm -hmm. weight loss surgery. Like it's the fact that they have to look at themselves. Uh-huh. you know like because they, they could yeah. be bigger than the person that's getting the weight loss surgery and then they're like oh shit like you know they're not ready to face the music well, but, hey, you need help too yeah I also think you know diet culture like the yeah. diet industry mm-hmm. think of how big the diet industry is like mm-hmm. diet industry doesn't actually want people to lose the weight like they yeah. they create these diets so people have to continue to cycle back through them and buy their products and buy their mm-hmm. programs and buy their systems like yeah. um you know so they they also the diet industry also doesn't want people to look at weight loss surgery and think of it as this like accessible and great thing you know mm-hmm. I think that they're also contributing to the stigma like yeah 100 oh, because they're like hey just agree. take this pill you don't need you don't really need surgery yeah, just yeah. take these things mm-hmm. you know like I mean yeah I mean there's different options for everybody right but yeah. I I completely agree like the the diet culture you know all of those meal plans all of you know weight washers everything like it's Yes, they want you to succeed, but only to a point. Yeah. Because if yeah. you succeed too much, then you're not gonna keep using it. It's like an yeah, old yeah. fashioned, like it's almost like an old fashioned like Ponzi scheme. Yeah. <laughs> a legal Ponzi scheme. Yeah. 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 Which That's I mean, fine. too, I, I will say this because that also bothers me about the bariatric industry as well, though, is I do, you know, we also have to keep in mind that bariatric surgery is an industry as well and it's a it money is. and yeah. surgeons are out to get their money like mm-hmm. so that is something that I also urge people to keep in mind um you know because I'll get messages from people that are like well my surgeon you know I, I haven't been as successful so my surgeon is thinking I might need a revision or my surgeon wants me to try this diet pill and I always like that really bothers me because mm-hmm. to me, that shows that the surgeon isn't there to actually help you and isn't there to actually help you be successful long term. They're just like, well, I guess this didn't work. So uh, let's try a different surgery. And yeah, it's more money in my pocket. Like, okay, let's try yeah, this. Like, no, f- you know, so I, that's another reason why I, you know, you got to get help. Like the mm-hmm. two, again, the surgery doesn't do all the work. Like mm-hmm. you have to work the surgery. So to a, 
certain point, it doesn't matter how many revisions you have, if you don't start mm-hmm. doing the work yourself, you're not going to be successful. And yeah. so you, you have to get therapy, get a coach, get like, you have mm-hmm. to start figuring out how to make this work for yourself. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I think the key thing is finding a therapist because yes. there is an issue. Yes. There is a very solid reason on why you do the things that you do. Yes. Yes. And until you are ready to face that, you, I don't feel like people are going to be as successful yeah. as when you get smacked in the face with it. And you're like, oh, oh, that's why mm-hmm. that's why. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. admitting that. Yes, I do that. Or that yeah. happened. It's so. so hard for people to admit mm-hmm. that they do things wrong. It's like, yeah. why is this where we all do things wrong? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it goes along with, I know a lot of the times, like we will mention food addiction mm-hmm. and a lot of people say, oh, I didn't have food addiction. And then they'll tell us like so many crazy things. And, and we're like, well, yeah, you kind of do like, cause we're admitting we have food addiction. Yeah, we know like, that we do, but this yeah. is our, this is our admitting like, yes, we have a problem. Yep. That is a reason. One of the reasons why I had the surgery, because I have a very real addiction to food. And so it always cracks me up and they're like, oh no, I don't have a food addiction at all. Mm-hmm. I just like to eat out once in a while or, you know, or I like my sweets and I'm like, yeah, yeah. but no, because they don't make the connection of while they're, why are they putting the food in their mouth? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. They're not making that connection anymore. Like that's, mm-hmm. that actually probably may have never even been a connection because I didn't realize I was a food addict until after I had the surgery. Yeah. Same here. So I was like, oh, that's my drug of choice. Oh. Because when I was like, you know, a month or two, I I don't know if you've ever felt this, but you were like, oh, I am crying and I want something and I can't have it. And that makes me more upset. Oh yeah. No, like the first like three weeks out from surgery, I feel like I've told the story before, but like I, so the first week out from surgery, I thought I was doing really good. I, I didn't feel like I was really struggling with anything, thought everything was peachy keen. Um, about like the seventh day in, I dropped a can on my foot Ooh, and like ow. it hurt, it stung a little mm-hmm. bit. Okay. Um, if you could have heard me crying from that, you would have thought I broke my foot. Like, mm-hmm. and I did not stop crying for like two weeks. I could do not, I couldn't even go back to work. I was supposed to go back to work. I tried to go back to work and my boss was like, you gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, no, no, no. Like, I could not stop. Everything made me cry. Every Aww. single little thing, I could not stop crying. And my parents didn't know what to do. They're like freaking out. They're like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Were you a very emotional kid? Like growing uh, yes. up? I've always yeah. been very, I'm very emotional. Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> I was wondering if like, maybe it was a switch for them. Like, what? Like, where no, are these, where I, are I am very, I am very emotional, but for me to just like, I, I'm also a very like happy go lucky person. And so it's kind of like, you know, I think they were, they were a little freaked out. Yeah. They were like, I think she's broken and I don't know what's They're like, going this, on. This got yeah. turned up a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an emotional girl. We all know it. Well, well if you don't know, you know, now, but yeah. like, seriously, like I, not that I cry in like the whim, but like, I can, when I feel things like it's intense. And so yeah. like, and I know how to calm myself down. It's just like, it's hard sometimes. It's just mm-hmm. like shit coming out. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> there are yeah. some times where she's just talking and we're just having a conversation and she, I can tell that she's going to start mm-hmm. crying and I'm just like, suck it back into your face. There's no need. And for I that. can, I just need, because Eric does it to me too. And I'm like, just don't say anything. Cause yeah. I can feel it. And I'm just like, I just need to work it back down. Like I understand <laughs> what's happening right now. Cause I can like, I learned what I, what part of my personality is that I'm, I'm an empath. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. when I walk into a room, I can feel the room and sometimes it's really intense. And I don't even know why I'm like, all of a sudden, like, <gasps> Like my breath yeah. take. Yeah. It's like breath taken away. So like, cause I'll be happy, go lucky. Like let's have fun now. And all of a sudden I'm like, uh, what's going on in this yeah. room? Like, yeah. It's fucking weird. Yeah. No, you can so. feel the energy. Yeah. Yeah. And That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know that until also after surgery. Yeah. Well, yeah. You find you out a lot of things about yourself after surgery. And yeah, that is when I, I always knew that I was addicted to food, but that is when I really like when it really set in like how bad it was. And yeah, I, I, I told 
I think I told my therapist at one of our sessions after that, or maybe it was the support. I also went to a support group. Um, I, I said something along the lines of like, I kind of realized in that first month out and like why I was so emotional all the time is because I was literally mourning. Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew before surgery, like, you know, you consciously know that you're going to be giving up food. And like, I think you have an idea of how hard that's going to be. You know, you're trying to prepare yourself mentally, but you're really not prepared. Like you just can't prepare yourself until you're in, like, you just have to experience it. You have to go. That's the only way. And I, you know, I knew that I was going to be giving up food and and that it was going to be hard, but I didn't realize it was going to feel so much like a breakup. Like literally, like I had lost my best friend or my partner, like, you Mm -hmm. know, like I didn't have this comfort that I've gone to my whole life. And Mm -hmm. that was hard. That was very emotional. Mm -hmm. I remember like throwing fits because I was like, I'm in a flare or I don't feel good and I want this food and I can't have it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I would literally like be throwing fits and I'm like, well, this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. This is what you signed up up for. Yep. And the scary thing is, you know, and I think this is like a lot of people get upset about this then further out from surgery is because like those first few months, yeah, they do a lot to help you control things. But then the further you get out, like your emotional eating can creep back in and your food addiction can creep back in. Like if you don't continue to put in the work to keep it in check, like it can show up again. And you can still find ways to eat for comfort as you get further out from surgery. Yes, yes. Um, and so that, you know, that's something I've had to work on. That's something I work on with my clients. Like a tool that we use to help with that is like food journaling. I find food journaling to be really, really helpful to help connect you to that. Like what you're saying, Mel, like the reason behind your eating, like, yeah when you go to eat or when, if you're struggling with a craving or you want to go eat something, you know, you have to sit down and reflect on like, wait, why? Like, what, what am I doing here? What could be going on? And I think that that helps a lot to get more in tune with your, that connection with the emotions Mm -hmm. and food. Yeah. Cause I think any food addiction is just like any other rug, Mm -hmm. like, because you're going to relapse. And that's what you're talking about. Like, it's going to happen. So it's yeah. like, you have to know, Hey, that's going to happen. You have to have the tools to rule yourself back in. Like you got to pull yourself back. So it's like yeah. the meal prepping, the journaling, like finding those connections mm-hmm. and being really aware can really go a long way and make you be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like the idea of food journaling. I don't know if I would ever be able to do it. Like I would, I think I would probably be like, oh crap, I didn't journal my food. And that would happen on a nightly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the idea for, especially like newbies yeah. that are just out of, you know, surgery and they're, they're starting completely fresh. Like, I feel like if I had started something like that back then, it would have been really great to like connect myself with what it even be helpful. Like if, if you can even, cause that's something else with my clients, like if it's hard for you to sit down all throughout the day and like journal with everything you eat, Mm -hmm. you know, at least at the end of your day, take five to 10 minutes before you let your head hit the pillow and Mm -hmm. reflect, reflect on what you ate and why and how it made you feel like, Mm -hmm. what did your day look like? Did you give into any cravings? Did you have any binge episodes? Like what, you know, what happened and how did that make you feel today? Um, I think that that can also be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. I like maybe keep a journal next to your bed. Yeah. Yeah. If that happens and you're like, oh crap, I didn't journal. That's habit stacking. It's what? So, well, so if you read the book, Atomic Habits, it goes over all these, all these other like tips of, you know, how to create a habit. So Mm -hmm. one of the main ones is to keep it visible. So having the journal on your nightstand, it's Mm -hmm. visible. You're going to see it when you go to bed, but then habit stacking is so 
you know, you crawl into bed, like you have a habit, you crawl into bed, you put your water next to your nightstand. Okay, so now you're gonna stack the habit of grabbing your journal. Like your cue is getting into bed mm. and then you grab your journal, you journal, your reward is then you get to go to bed. Like you don't get to turn off the light until no. you're done journaling. Yeah, I like that. That's, That's awesome. very like, we're taking control yeah. of the situation. Yes. Yes. We're not letting our habits take control of us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. We, <laughs> we have learned so much from you. Seriously. I, love I feel it. like this was so eye opening. Yeah. This was a great like session. So <laughs> a session. I just hope y'all know. I feel like it's a session. We should do more. I feel like you've been, you're now coaching. Like you coached us this entire hour. I feel like this is literally a lot of what I go over in my coaching. <laughs> How funny. I love it. I can see why you are so successful at it. Yeah. And, and this is my coaching corner. This is like, this uh, is where I sit and I have my little plane. How my cute. Little... How cute. <laughs> I know. I was noticing your moose. I was like, we oh, just, that's kind of cute. We just chat, you know, this is, that's what it is. <laughs> because people need help. And I love the fact that you're like, yeah, I'm here. I want to yeah. do this. I want to help. Uh, but back to your journey, journey a little bit, like what was like your biggest NSP or what was like your first one that you were super excited about? My, oh, NSP is that what you yeah, said? Yeah. Um, oh, one of my biggest or so probably one of my first ones was when we went to, I went to Vegas at like three months post-op or something mm. like that. And just being able to like, first of all, sit in the airplane seat somewhat comfortably and not have to be freaked out that I have to get a extender. Mm -hmm. Um, and then being able to walk around Vegas almost all day and not feel completely, you know, like in pain. Right. Um, so that was big. And then like <clears throat> some of my biggest accomplishments, biggest moments after surgery have definitely been like my first 14 er That was huge. Um, my first Spartan race was Ooh. amazing. Like that was a huge accomplishment. My first, my, the, I ran my first 5k at, um, not quite my, I was within my year mark, I think my first 5k. Mm. And then the Boulder Boulder, which is a 10 K I ran like right after my one year mark. Cause that's always on Memorial day. So that would have been uh -huh. like May 23rd was my one year. So then I Damn. ran it on Memorial day. So that was huge. Like being able, like I ran like 6.2 miles without stopping. What? That's freaking awesome. That is yeah. crazy. Impressive. So all of my biggest like NSV moments, which is also why fitness is so important to me mm -hmm. and why I preach fitness and has, have all been like physical achievement, you know, accomplishments. Yeah. And I hate mm -hmm. that those are so huge because so often, especially with those of us that have been big our whole lives, like we we have no idea what we're capable of. Like we have no, no idea how strong we are, how fit we actually like, because we've never even actually really tried. And yeah. once I started actually trying, like I got addicted. It's like, oh my gosh, I am so much stronger than I ever realized. Like, why did I think I, I was the kid in middle school that couldn't even run the mile. You know, I'm the one like flunking PE, right? Yep, so yep. now here I am close to my thirties at that time. I'm over 30 now, but, um, you know, in my late twenties running six miles, like what? That's impressive. Yeah. You would have never thought that you could have done that. Yeah. yeah like, and yeah. So, and that's another, like, you know, I'm, I'm really big on preaching like self-love and, and everything like that. But I think on this journey, you're not going to love your physical form. I'm sorry. Like that, it's so hard to do. Like we have mm -hmm. the loose skin, you know, you're, you're not going to lose 150 pounds and look like a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, you're just no. not. Um, and so you have to make it about more than just the physical. You have to make it about more than the weight loss. You have to make it about more than your appearance. Mm -hmm. And to me, what helps the most is focusing on my, my physical abilities, like focusing on how amazing my body is and all that it can accomplish and all that it can do. Like when I'm having bad body image days, those are the things that I then try to focus on. It's like, 
you know, thanking my body for all that it, it does for me and mm-hmm. how strong it is and how capable it is and all the adventure, like, no, like you said, like you're big in adventures now. It's like, thank you body for taking me on all these adventures. And, um, you know, that's, I, that makes it easier to love myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. When I, I would agree. To, Cause those goals, physical goals always make you feel good. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. no matter what, like yeah. me lifting that fence, like the fact that I can do that is like, I was so excited mm-hmm. because that thing is a boost. It is heavy. Yeah. And there is no <laughs> way I could have done that five, six years ago. No freaking yeah. way. I would have lived to be like, nope, not, not doing it, babe. Yeah. And that's like what I've learned over this journey is like, he would do so much of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I just assume that's like what dudes do. That's why they do it, whatever. And like, now I understand why he would just be so annoyed because he'd be like, yeah, just go do that. Like, it's so easy. <laughs> Not realizing how much like physicalness you have to have to do some like the yard yeah. work stuff. Yeah. It is not easy by any means. And so like, now I can do all those things now. Like, yeah, it's not a problem. I'm in a pool for two hours, cleaning it with bleach and water and like a HVAC and I can do all these things. The sun's out. I'm like burning up, but there's no way I would have lasted like 30 minutes before. Yeah. Now I'm yeah. there for two hours. Like it's insane. The difference, yeah. like, what your body can do. And it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to see, like, look back and be like, there's no way I could have done that. Yes. And be proud of yourself for how far yes. you've come. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I remember I was taking a photo last year of the, of the pool, the fact that I like cleaned it all and did all the things. And my kid was like, why? Like, like, and I was like, well, think, that's me. I was like, Dylan, like, think about it. Like, I would have never been able to do this before. And he's like, why? And I was like, remember five years ago, how big I was, I was, in, I was 308. And he's like, oh, I guess I didn't ever thought about it that way. And I was like, yeah, I would have never been able to do this. So that's why I'm like excited to be able to do this. And that it takes something off of Eric's plate. Like mm-hmm. he yeah. doesn't have to be the one out there. Like he can do other things that he enjoys. I can do this. And I actually liked it. Like, yeah, was it hard work? But I was like, I felt so good doing it and looking back at it. I was Very like, accomplished. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. So is there anything else you want to add to our? I, I don't think so. I mean, this has been great. I, you know, I always like the yeah, if anyone, I guess if anyone's interested in coaching, you know where to find me, uh, Mm -hmm. just like my Instagram page. Um, and then, you know, as always, like I, if anyone's interested in Bomar or, you know, anything, any of those supplements, if you have questions or anything like that, reach out to me, um, use code bloom. I know we're going to do our cookie, like Cinco de Mayo. Oh, but we don't know when this is going to air. So I just realized that. Well, if it's after Cinco de Mayo, then go to our IGTVs and you will see it. Yes. You will see you watch yes. it. Yes. Make. Yes. Yeah. We have some fun recipes planned for Cinco de Mayo. Yes. So, yeah. And we need to get everything for margaritas. That's right. Yes. That's right. So yeah. we can I, celebrate Cinco de Mayo the right way. <laughs> I, I did just remember something that I will have to tell you off air, just FYI. <laughs> Okay. So I yeah. just want to preface with that. So just stick around after we just, sign off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stick around. Yeah. Hot second. Um, but yeah, for anybody that's listening, definitely go hang, like hang out and watch mm-hmm. Michaela's uh, Instagram. If yes. you need anything from her, she's so generous. She will help mm-hmm. no matter what. So, you know, don't take advantage of her, but definitely <laughs> if she needs, like, if you need something, talk to her, talk to us. Mm-hmm. Like that's what we're, we are here for. Yes. So don't worry about it. And then, yeah, go to the YouTube, hit subscribe. Cause you can see this. Yes. When it drops, you'll be able to see this not in the same time, but you'll eventually get to see this on yeah. YouTube. So yes. go hang out. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to see it right away, go over to our Patreon. Yeah. It's patreon.com forward slash OSLP. And we just added a couple new tiers and revamped the whole thing. So go over, take a look. If you love us, which how could you not? <laughs> um, go sign up and support your favorite girls because- that's how we run this podcast. And that's how we're going to break the stigma. Yeah. Like legit, it goes back into like the software, the stuff that we have to buy for like the lighting, the yeah. chairs, like the whole thing, it literally just goes right back in mm-hmm. like, yeah, immediately. Yeah. So, There's thank no, you. There, thank you we, patrons. Yeah. We, freaking yeah, love, we you. love our patrons. So much. like every time a month goes by, we're like, Oh, we could, now we can have lights. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, Oh, now we can have this like software. It's awesome. So, exactly. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. So, All right. Well, well, that is everything. That is everything. Thank you guys for 
having us and Michaela on. And I hope you guys um, enjoyed your time. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.